Hello there everyone, welcome back. We have managed to get ourselves a little bit of experience with the Eldar. Oh, I didn't even realize I got a level up on this thing, so I guess Weird Boy it is. And now, what was my train of thought? Oh yeah, we fought against Eldar and there's a lot of potential that match up. With all these tractor cans and like the booster upgrades, as well as potential disruptor saps, there is an opportunity to hunt his ships down. Although, going after the Eclipse of course is the bad thing, considering they're more mobile, but to be fair, he was doing the right thing. He was kind of holding his Void Stalker back until I commit it, quite frankly, and then just put the Void Stalker in an awkward spot. So, that's not always going to happen, but if I'm a little more diligent trying to listen for him, watch his movement, then I should be have an easier time getting the drop in that Void Stalker. And quite frankly, once that thing is gone, there goes practically half his firepower, because really, the big threat is all those bombers, quite frankly. Not so much the Pulsars, because he has to turn towards me to do the damage he needs with those. It's really the bombers, because he has that extra range and he has that freedom to just run away from me all day. So, if I can get good about locking down the Void Stalker, it's actually going to be easier to lock it down as comparison to the Eclipses, then we're going to be doing just fine, I think. But... As we're going to this weekend with the big massive sale on Battlefleet Gothic and a bunch of other games, I'm going to feel bad for all the small fry, the new players I'm about to m murder. I apologize to you folks now. I'm going to try and be generous. I swear. Ignore the first orc video if you may have watched that. That was not intentional, I swear. Alright, we are going right into another space station assault and quite frankly, I favor this a little bit as the orc player I think just by the sheer number of uh, mega cans I have and the fact I can kind of brute force it is that the route I want to go though because he let's see I'm going to assume he's like an admiral level 8 as well so there's going to be no pulled punches here it's just a question what do I want to field because we got imperial navy so raw health pool is going to be useful and he does have the possibility of Novacan, so avoiding light cruisers might be a good idea, or at least frigates anyway. At least try and spread them out so he can't at least kill multiples of my frigates, so we'll get a second hammer. We'll see, what are my levels looking like for my bashes? I think I'll take a level 7 to potentially get its level 8 in at some point. And now we're going to go with some savages and keep an eye on my numbers. Because I could throw in a nerf cruiser here, actually. I could potentially throw an actual cruiser. I think I'll just commit with the light cruiser. Get a nice mix of variety here, and that way I don't have to commit too much to the frigates because of what I said before, all those dang Novacans I'm going to deal with. It'll help limit the potential of that neutering me really quickly. But they're still there to help contribute and potentially draw some fire, which is ideally what I want them to do. Draw a little bit of fire. If he's auto-casting his bombers, they're going to take those hits really well for me. And then my cruiser fleet's going to be unhindered. Although, it's like I said with the Eldar fleet. There's not really much to learn as far as fight playing this matchup against the Imperial Navy, honestly. It's just me recklessly going after the space station and watching it explode. Not really much to say here, not very exciting, but it's going to be fun without a doubt. It's going to be fun for me. And actually, like I said before, I do want my frigates kind of in front, so that way, if he does have anything on autocast, they draw the fire for me really damn well. And I think ultimately that's the good potential for him. I just got to be careful about having him go up ahead from the rest of my fleet, because that's kind of what screwed me a little bit. In my matchup with Eldar last video is because I forgot to boost two of my cruisers. And of course they couldn't micro warp jump forward because the, uh, my Havocs, my onslaughts were so far ahead. They were actually blocking the sensor range or the max reach I could with my micro warp jump. Basically making a jump attempt pretty much useless. So gotta learn that there and I don't actually have my control group. So I'm also going to have to make it a point to move my ships forward well what I lost my train side again damn it but nonetheless yeah I should probably group my fleets as I'm deploying them because this is a little bit awkward trying to get them all grouped up in all honesty 
But nonetheless, they already know what they're doing. They're readied up. Let's just at least get some groups set up. So your group one, your group two, group three over here. It's a bit of a mess, I'm not going to lie. But at least I want to have some way to control them. At least quickly. I'm probably still going to individually control them so it's not a huge issue. But at least that way, if there's like a big frantic panic for me to dodge or reposition, then at least I can do that quickly and accessibly. And now it's just a matter of keeping on this poor death deal because of its turbo boosters. It's prone to losing its engines if I were to boost prematurely or early. And we're about to start. He did not ready up, so let's see what happens here. Let's see what happens here. Is every, nothing really needs to move. Size for a random uh, savage and a cruiser. So far we're looking good here. He's only got three ships, so... This strikes me as two battle cruisers and a battleship. I'm thinking. Yeah. I am thinking that's what he has, and they're all carrier ships. Well, that's fine. I don't care about your dang carrier ships because I have no torpedoes or anything those things are really useful against. Hell, since he just deployed them, I could just recklessly go in there and potentially hit them before they recharge. That is a theory, and a ooh, that was painful. Huh, see what see what I was talking about, uh, burning his cooldowns? The savages are doing that well. The savages are doing that real damn well. But now, it's time to focus on the station. And let's get moving. And also watch for that dang mine. I would like not to get hit by that. Keep an eye on that, just go in recklessly. Slow and steady wins the race in this case. Now let's see, torpedoes are coming. Those are really bad torpedoes, quite frankly. Only my cruise is really at risk. It's just a shame I'm not in a good position for tractor cannons, honestly. Only one cruiser can do that. Death Dealer is going to do alright. I think those bombers are actually going after the onslaught, so... Yep. Those Havocs are doing perfectly. They're just drawing all the fire. That's like the most valuable 28 points I just got. Nonetheless, let's keep on moving in. Everything. Get ready to charge. Get ready to charge. He's actually... Oh my, he's such a kind fellow. He's just getting the hell out of the way for me. Thank you very much. I will happily take your tribute. I will take your tribute. And I will relish it. Although my Havocs are be uh, becoming a little bit riotous. They're rebelling a little bit because they're smashing each other. So I may not have thought this through the best. And you can just get the hell out of the way. I don't care about you. In fact, ram each other. Ram your own ships for all I care. Come on. Turn off your cogitators. I don't care about what you have to offer. Just destroy this damn thing. Once my groupings want to work, jeez. For a moment there, I wasn't able to switch my targets, which is weird. Oh well, this is going to be nice and quick. Like I said, very anticlimactic, but he gave it to me, quite frankly. I just need... Now I gotta move this mess. I made myself a bit of a mess here. So let's move the trash, shall we? Self-inflicted damage is just a bonus at this point. It's just a bonus. And I can micro-warp jump to get a nice surround, even. We're all set, then. Just turn your heading. Maybe you don't get butchered as much. And that should be game. What can I say? Not much strategy, not much tactics, just the way an orc wants it, in all honesty. And I did have Brace for Impact up, so hopefully nothing died. I'm hoping my armor negates a lot of that explosion damage. But hey, it was his own damn fault. It's that simple. If he's going to run away from me and not take me seriously, then he's just going to lose. Simple as that. Because you can't really 
afford to not protect the objective, especially if it's stationary. As I've come to learn in my championship matches. I don't know if you ever watched any of those championship matches. There was at some point there where I saw it. The space station assault was actually a liability for me, even as defender. Because there was one orc battle where everything seemed to go my way and I still almost lost. So that match alone made me never want to use space station def assault as defender anyway. It may be a possibility still as the attacker, but more than likely I'm going to have to deal with lots of torpedo ships. Lots of torpedo orcs, so probably still a bad idea for that regard. But nothing died. Heavily damaged result though. But we got some experience. We got our level 6, so lots of thrusters it is. This is lots of, lots of thrusters, right? There we go. I don't, want the, I don't want the extra boosters. I don't want the turbo boosters, ideally. Let's avoid that for now. And again, my crew slots are a little bit of a mess here. I never did got around to reorganizing them. But to be fair, I don't honestly know what's actually best. Probably the DACA Master is one of them that I should upgrade. Or at least get it up to a point where it's at least 50% crit chance. It, had, it didn't apply for the extra crew point. I just invested in it. So two crew points will get to 54. And I think the third one got it over 60. We'll know once it refreshes and updates. But... I actually got a second upgrade slot, so this kind of demands me to get some belt armor on this thing, because quite frankly, the majority of my weaponry, or at least the weaponry I'm re rely winning on, or winning with, is all on the prow, so I am very prone to lucky critical hits on that and ruining my strategy, so anything to help negate that helps a ton, which kind of goes to me infesting boys at some point too. Especially if I ever can get some rank matches in. But I'll have to think on it more and actually get some pra practice matches with Chaos and all the other fleets. To really know for certain. Alright, it's time to put a newer player in their place I guess. Although we're going to try and have some fun. We're just going to try and give them a good match if nothing else. I'm not that heartless. I don't need the renown because I'm swimming in that. So if I can get away with experience if nothing else then we're golden. At least I'm going to try. Because I still would like to get these bashes to level 8. And we have room for two savages. So it goes back to what I said before. He should be able to beat me in straight up attrition. Because none of my upgrades really help with my firepower. Real essential. What? Well, none of my upgrades really help with my combat potential. Especially in close. Because they're more designed to get at something that's running away from me. Except for the belt armor, it at least helps keep my mega can operational, if nothing else. And then the savages are all about durability, so at least they are going to be more potent as a result with their upgrades, if nothing else. If nothing else, my frigates have more combat potential upgrades than my actual cruisers. But we'll see what happens, because if he doesn't know how to control his ships, it's still going to be a slaughter. It's still going to hurt a ton. Because ideally, you want to try and keep your prow facing my ships, especially when I'm facing you. It comes down to what kind of weaponry I have, you can change your tactics some. Because if I have torpedoes, then your prow doesn't matter so much. If I have the heavy cans, which are the broadside cans, then you really just want to make sure you have your prow facing me when I do my charge attack. When I charge on through, make sure my your prow absorbs the damage and then conveniently pushes you sideways so the prow is still facing my heavy cans ideally at least that's what my strategy was when I was facing orcs in the case of heavy cans just face my prow to him ideally angle myself in a way so my prow is just pushed along with his ship so that way they can continue to absorb damage from the heavy cans Assuming I don't have shields up to really take the hits, because otherwise that becomes pointless if the shields are going to just take the hits. Because the shields don't really absorb any armor. Oh, and I picked a bad spot to deploy. Go figure. Oh well. That is fine here. We're just going to split these up, and it'll just converge together afterwards. Not an issue at all. But, what is he going to field? So far we're looking at five ships, so a single cruiser... Maybe four frigates, kind of like how I've seen before with the 250 point battles, so it could be anything. 
Hell, he could still have two light cruisers and still feel three frigates, I think. So we're not going to know until we actually see him. And another thing I'm going to have to constantly be remembering to do, especially so early on, use this damn reload. Because again, it helps with my cooldown recharging, or rather charging up my micro warp jump for when I'm about to engage. I need to be proactive with that, because that will give me much better momentum for the actual fight itself. So, what does this formation tell me? He either has two light cruisers in the front, or he actually has three light cruisers in the back, which I seriously, seriously doubt. I seriously doubt that because he wouldn't even have points for three light cruisers. Never mind the two frigates. So, I'm judging two Dauntlesses and then three frigates of some kind. I don't know if he's gone with the actual combat frigates or like a Widowmaker and Cobra. Although technically the Cobra is still a combat uh, frigate, isn't it? You just wouldn't think of it as one because of its, how fragile it is and the fact that its main weapon is torpedoes. It's more for hit and run than actual combat. But I'm watching his formation seeing how he goes. I may want to keep these Sprout and lure him into a false sense of security that he can hit these ships when they're isolated. And then just turn and boost in on him to, as a quick way to converge back together. Do need to watch my flank though, which is kind of why I think attacking this left side is more valuable. Because there's more firepower on the left than there is on the right. Hard to say, because I'm just making a lot of judgments based on his movement and the formation. So I could be completely wrong on this. But if anything, I want the actual frigates to take point, draw a little bit of the fire, at least the initial fire, because it seemed to work well before with the bombers, so it's sure to work here, especially since I said again, they kind of have the upgrades for their durability, so it's actually more valuable to let them take the initial hits. And then start converging up. I'm going to ignore those two, let him make the move towards me. He's going to try and flank me, and I'll be ready for that, either with my tractor cans or just being able to boost or micro warp jump, because that's going to be up in another 40 seconds. 40 seconds, count it down, folks, because I might even just use it right away if the engagement doesn't happen by then. We'll see. Nothing exciting, I know. I'm just waiting, waiting to see what he does. Because I could just literally boost right now and probably have these recharged in time. So let's do it. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. So those are two firestorms. I'm fine with that. Try and do some damage to him. And actually, let's, let's just kill stuff. Well, that wasn't the result I was honestly expecting, but it works. It works. And this savage could just go after that frigate pretty quickly. So he does have two Dauntlesses there. Now, can I hit that Dauntless in front? Especially without a tractor can available. It's looking good. We're going, going. Ah, oh, just barely missed the damn thing. Although, it's time for take number two, folks. Take number two. We're going up on his ass. Although, I'm going to miss with this charge as well, aren't I? That's a shame. He does have lances, so this works in his favor a little bit. Go, 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 charge, ram! Perfect! That's what I'm looking for. Got some nice damage. We got brace for impact hit, so... I may have lied a little bit about going easy on him, I guess, because I am abusing my tractor cans a little. Needless to say. But there goes his weaponry. His prow's just gone. He's focusing down the frigates, which I'm kind of okay with. I just gotta make sure he's not hitting the rear as much as he... Oh, well, there he goes now. There it goes now. And just have these things smash each other some. And we got ramming speed, ramming potential going on. Let's do it. Can we get a double kill? Nope. I don't even think we got a single kill. Although that's going to change in a moment. 
Go ahead, Rammy. You're just feeding the orcs need to just ram and murder everything. And this other ship is just going to run to warn the rest of the Imperial Navy. The horror that just happened today. And then he disappoints me. Oh well. Time to correct this mistake. Time to correct this. Just keep on going. Keep on hitting. And eventually he'll break down. Do I have tractor cans? I have two about to come up, so... Let me just reload. That'll help speed up my uh, tractor cannon. You have your choice. I'm going to give you a little window to get the hell out. Or are you going to accept this uh, generous gift? I don't think he's going to do it. Alright, fine, be that way. Oh, just missed. Just missed. Oh, well, we'll take it on the sword, I guess. The Nova. The Firestorm. Whatever the hell this thing's called. Like, I call it a Nova because I'm thinking Space Marines right now. He had an opportunity to leave. He did not want it. Now he's going to suffer the ultimate price. The Goth price. Although, technically I'm more like the... Bl what is it? Blood Sons? Evil Sons? They still look like Goth ships. So he's just uh, delaying the inevitable here. Now ram again. Ramming speed. Once it decides to activate. There we go. Oh, I want to ram it for the kill. But we get the ram for good measure. He had his opportunity. He did not want it. A little unfortunate, but it was a good fight otherwise. It was a good fight otherwise. He had the lances though, so with torpedoes he could have done a lot of damage with how close proximity I was trying to get. Especially if he ever hit me in the rear with the melta torpedoes. That could have hurt a lot if my repairs were not available. But otherwise lances are probably too slow, at least for close range engagement. They're good constant damage, mind you, but he needs to be able to be constantly hitting me there, and he's not doing that if he's running away. Moral of that story, although I do feel bad. It makes me want to just go with a lower orc fleet, but that doesn't help me with what I'm aiming for, which is just fighting chaos, fighting all the other Admiral level 8 fleets. Put them in their place, ideally. Alright, we're going to have ourselves another slugfest, it looks like. This time, just standard cruiser clash. I'm pretty certain Balrog wasn't the one I did the space station assault on, but... Nonetheless, let's put the other elites in their place then. We'll let the brand new players fight each other, and hopefully they can get some good learning experience. But for me, I want these guys. I want to fight the Admiral level 8s. At least be their distraction, if nothing else. Although... This does, still doesn't help with me figuring out if my strategy to getting close to a elusive target is paying off, because all these Imperial Navy fleets are not exactly going to have the easiest time, except for maybe the Emperor. But that just comes down to a micro warp jump, and as we already know, I am equipped to deal with a micro warp jump, at least temporarily. And with its 50 armor all around, that thing's going to take a bit of a beating, needless to say, once I do get on top of it. But for some reason, it's taking a while to actually load up. This weird. I don't know what's going on here. Alright, there we are, finally. I don't know what caused the delay, but we're working again. We are up and operational. So, do I go with two hammers? Do I go with the Death Dealer? Decisions, decisions. I kind of want to have more frigates, so sounds silly to say that considering I'm investing more points in two hammers, but this should be okay, maybe. Because I'm still going to have five cruisers, but this gives me more points for more savages. Yeah, I'm, I'm forgetting again, he may have Nova cans, so I regret that idea already. I regret that idea already, because Nova cans can just ruin any frigate fleet I have to offer, so 
get the level 4 in, get a cruiser to complement it, two hammers, and this will work. This at least is more flexible. Maybe not better, because I like the idea of having two hammers and a couple of brutes with, as well as a handful of savages, but if he does have no cans, then I'm not punished heavily for this. So long as my freaks are spread out, he can only kill at least one with the Nova Can Salvo. That's all I really need to do. And this bug is becoming more and more prevalent for some weird reason. I'm seeing seeing the minimap as we get the introduction screen, so not a huge deal, mind you, but I am noticing this is becoming a more common thing. Oddly enough, so strategy is straightforward. Nothing exciting here, but let's spread it out. Well, I don't I just need to spread out my frigates, honestly. Spread out my frigates. Have one probably in front of each cruiser, so that way it's not as easy for him to shoot him down. Ideally. Although I don't want to move the death deal back, so instead, we'll put this in front of all my other freak my other cruisers. So group two. Group 3, this is a little more uniform at least in comparison to my first match. I just gotta remember to move them like this so that way they stay in a straight line. And then we'll worry about their heading afterwards. Nope, that's the wrong one. So reposition it again. Group 5, get on over there and just watch for their position like that dang asteroid field. Oh well, I can reposition easily enough. Let's get started. So, five ships, so... And he has beacons, although... Beacons don't do a whole lot. Especially for Imperial Navy. But I could avoid it. I could still avoid it. And my death deal is, looks like it's just gonna dodge it regardless, so... These two can try and dodge. He's firing torpedoes, so... So, light cruiser, regular cruiser. So Nova Cans are not a big threat. Not yet, anyway. No, I was completely wrong about that. Oh well. I saw his heading was completely different. But we're golden. He detects a few ships, that's fine. He still has to get through them. He still has to get through them. And he's still only going to detect, detect like two ships anyway. They're like my most expendable ships, so that's fine. So, let's do let's hold position here, dodge these torpedoes a moment, and get on going. So he's going to get the perfect devil hit on the two frigates. He only has a single Novacan, so not a big deal. He needs multiples of them, but... Heh, fine, kill the frigate. It's only a single frigate, thankfully. But he got the perfect Novacan for that first shot, though. Hitting both frigates at the edge of it. Alright. So he's wasting those cooldowns on a bunch of frigates. That's fine. We'll just let everything go on up. Keep on moving. My Savage is getting a little bit spread out, but... A little more uniform fleet. Have them coming at the same time. Alright, fine. Do that. See if I care. Because you just launched all your bombers on a goddamn frigate. Is that really what you want to do? So now I need to find targets of opportunity here. Because I, I could kill this easily enough. Is that what I want to do? Probably not. Because look at that thing melt. Alright, fire Nova Cans. Let's see how much this does. And I forgot my recharge because this actually would have been a perfect opportunity for the recharge, the reload mechanic. And he auto casts the torpedoes on a frigate. Oh, joyous day. Oh, joyous day. Here, have a death dealer. Definitely wants to say hi to you. 
Ooh, that felt painful. Nope, I, I, I must second guess that because I have boosters going, so I want to reposition. You're not letting me. There. Everything's going to die a miserable mess. We nearly took out his light cruiser. I'm just barely out of boring reach there. And this is looking good. Everything's going to die. Including this one Novacan here. Goodbye. Thanks for dropping by. Thanks for being nice and easy for me. If nothing else, demolishing these Imperial Navy fleets just make me look all that much better. It just makes me look good for my championship matches. Because I do technically have an un undefeated record against Orcs, even if one was just by sheer luck, to be perfectly honest. So I will take this as a compliment to my capabilities as an Imperial Navy player. And that's gonna hit my side, is it? No, oh, well, that's fine. That is fine. I even forgot about my dang auger disruptor, which was probably the biggest mistake I did there. Never mind the reload, that's only like a minor convenience. Something I could have abused, but the not using auger disruptor, that was a big mistake. Oh well. Not really much to say. This is really too easy. I'm not gonna lie, that seemed too easy. But again, it's like I said before. I don't really have issue getting close to Imperial Navy. I'm fixated strictly on Chaos, Eldar, and possibly Tau for how this composition works out. Everything else is just an obstacle. I'm not gonna lie. Space Marines though, that is a bit of a weird one. Because everything 75 armor, it's really the brace for impact that can ruin my day. And he does have the mobility, so Space Marines is gonna be a weird one. I could be vulnerable to that too, in all honesty. I kinda completely neglected them, almost, if I were to be perfectly honest, so I could have issues with them as well, but Imperial Navy, that's just another day for the orcs. Alright, let's have ourselves a bonus match here. Oh, looks like Braveheart decided to go with a brand new fleet. This will be amusing. I will try and be more generous than my last 250 point battle. I swear I'll try. Uh, oh well, I'll keep it simple. Only light cruisers. I'll try to withhold using my tractor cans because that is the one main benefit I have in comparison to his fleet. But he has massive point advantage, so. This should still be a fun time because he does have the Dauntlesses for speed. I don't have to make the sheer number of ships for ridiculous firepower like that poor Dauntless at the beginning of that match. Ouch. That's all I have to say. Ouch. Man. He can swarm me and outmaneuver me at least, because of the lack, limited number of tractor cans, although that's the one thing I also have going for me, because if I'm going to go with two bashes, I don't have disrupt the saps, because weird boy towers can't benefit from that, so the sap cans on them are just strictly for additional damage, like little chipping poke damage for anything that does happen to keep distance from me. So it remains to be seen. I will take my time with this and we'll just take the level 7s because I want them to get their level 8 in eventually. And this will, should be a good spar match. He does have the firepower potential as we get again with this dang glitch for the introduction. He doesn't have the firepower to beat me, he just has to outmaneuver me now to take advantage of my armor. That's really what it comes down to. Especially when he has like a bunch of frigates. Which even then, it's not too difficult. He can just stay at 6,000 unit range and just poke me there consistently and relatively reliably. Even if there is less accuracy for that distance. We'll see what happens. 
we'll see what he feels. Three chips, so so far we're looking at the tra traditional 250 points, I imagine. What else is he gonna throw in? What else is he gonna throw in? Oh, he's already. Hmm. So this is three dauntlesses then. This is honestly three dauntlesses. This ought to be exciting. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty excited for this. I just gotta be careful of those torpedoes. If he has torpedoes, that could do a lot of burst damage to me. If there are lances, then I can kind of just weather the storm. Hell, I could go so ridiculous and just let the savages take the hits for me. Because they're kind of sacrificial. I just gotta make sure I'm in good condition when I get in melee. Or get in close range, because technically that is melee, isn't it? At least for giant capital ships. So that's the assumption I'm going with. Three Dauntlesses, we just don't see any torpedoes, so... Until I see otherwise, they're lances, so... My savages should actually take point. In all honesty, my savages should take point. Just get in front and soak a good amount of that initial lance fire. Because they straight up have better shields for that. Especially if he doesn't have like any upgrades if these are level 1 like cruisers, so... He's not exactly going to get bonus damage on those shields. And then when I'm ready to get into a sick of it, and I forgot again the damn reload. It's a little late now, I'm not going to lie. But I seriously need to make that a habit, but of course... Doing all this commentary is easily distracting, I'm not going to lie. Because that speeds up my process of getting them up, and I'm my brace for impact would honestly be available by that time, so... I really need to start doing that or just not do it all because this is probably the worst of both worlds. I get the reload and I'm doing it at the poor, poor time just before we're engaging. But with this savage taking the initial fire, at least that should buy me enough time for him to recharge, reload. So I think we're fine. Okay. Okay, you do that. I'm going to take a one torpedo here. Nope. Uh, oh well, I took two Meltas, so that's good for me. Alright. If he wants to play that route, I'll let him have it. But he does have two torpedoes. Yeah. One Dauntless and two with torpedoes. I should just boost on in. I should punish the hell out of him. And he has shield. He has a lot of shield recharge on everything. Huh, is it just me or did those bashes have more capacitor than my savages? Am I going crazy there? I wonder. Nonetheless, let's start the show, shall we? Alright, let's ruin his day. He used up all his boosters, so this will be fun. This will be fun. And Brace for Impact's not quite up yet. I almost probably don't want to use the re Brace for Impact if he's just going to do Kai maneuvers, because Reload's actually pretty good here, honestly. But if he's turning to engage, I'm fine. That's fine, just unload. Give him hell. Have these savages focus on this poor little thing. Actually, turn off your focusing, just follow it. And I did forget my boarding, but that is easily rectified. That is easily rectified, so now let's continue to unload, shall we? One, uh, I'm not going to get that extra shot in the hall, but there goes his shields in a hurry. And there goes his ship. There goes his ship. Nice and simple. Okay, that was a weird exchange. I wanted to just ram him, but that actually gave me the benefit of dodging his torpedoes completely. 
There, take some pointers, fella. You need to use your damn brace for impact. Because you failed to kill this dang thing. So now is your one opportunity. Do you run? Do you run or not? Decide now for or forever lose your ship in horrible display of ramming orcish brutality. Nope, he's not taking a hint. He's one of them arrogant fellas. Alright, we're just being switched then. Bait and switch. Oh, and he's using Melta Torpedoes too, so there's his other mistake. Melta Armor, or Melta Torpedoes against Knife 5 Armor, so... Even with a higher level fleet he had there. Maybe I'm mixing up the players either way. This is not pretty. It is not pretty, but I'm letting him go. Nope. Okay. I had faith he would do a smart thing. It is not happening this time. Alright, fella. Nice knowing ya. You lucky bugger. You lucky bugger. Let's correct this wrong that just happened. Uh, I feel bad for him. I'm just doing the most simple strategy ever. Besides the fact that I have tractor cans to kind of complicate that. Although, Dauntlesses are still pretty good there. They're just lots of rapid fire and not really big impactful ones like the cruiser. And those torpedoes I had promise, he just chose to use Melta. Not on the prow, please. It hurts my soul. Melta, do not penetrate armor. The regular torpedoes do. If you were facing my side or my rear, then go for it. But not the prow, please. Anything but that. I don't want to be a jerk. I really don't. It's a little difficult though when I have to face off against them. So take this as a learning experience. Hell, I would really recommend, as my frame rates are dropping again, I apologize for that, but I definitely recommend maybe the first 10, 15 matches of my championship series because there was a lot of orcs in those matches. So at least for you Imperial Navy players, have a look at them. That hopefully should at least teach you a little bit. At least about the orc matchup because it's unrealistic to expect to get away from them. Maybe the Dauntlesses can some, but you should seriously not expect to get away.